Hello guys and welcome to another Adobe Lightroom video. Now before I start, just a quick disclaimer, this video will be quite boring for some of you, uh, which, which will probably involve uh, a lack of talking because I'm trying to concentrate, um, but I'll try and talk quite a lot, I have a lot to talk about in today's uh, editing video, but um, yeah. Um, also, you would have noticed down in the timeline that I have edited quite a lot already. And the reason was, be me being me, I realised that I wasn't recording, basically. Um, and also, the, also if I was, it would be an hour, alright? <laughs> We're not even halfway yet. But uh, anyway, welcome guys. So, on the 26th, uh, which is two days ago from recording today... Um, I was down the Great Dorset Steam Fair. The Great Dorset Steam Fair is still going on. I think it's the last day today. Um, so, yeah. And um, and uh, I was down there uh, doing uh, photos, obviously. Stuff like that. Um, I was down there with my, my two two lenses. Uh, I have three, but I, I took two. And uh, the main reason is my... Most of you will probably know if you check myself on Twitter, etc., stuff like that. My 200 to or 55 to 200 is out of action, and uh, sadly, um, that's dead. It's dead. So, um, so yeah, but um, ew. so I took my uh, 55, uh, my 18 to 55, which is my wide. And I took then took my uh, Sigma 150 to 600 reviews on the way, guys. Don't worry. Um, and actually, this is part of the review today, um, in a way. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, anyway, anyway. So now what we've done, I've done most of the day photos. I've done most of the ones in the uh, day. And then I'm now moving slowly on to when it gets to low light. Now, I'm actually going to be talking about the low light performance of this lens, the uh, 150 to 600, and that's going to be in the review of it. And I'm going to use some of the, uh, the photos here to show... How it performs you can actually see as we go along the light gets really dark um and uh yeah but anyway 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 we're gonna start here today um so it, this is around ooh, getting on like six possibly seven six i'd say around six ish so light the light is not it's around up here the sun is um so yeah um anyway I do like this shot. I do like this shot. This is the first one, actually. This one was. I do like this, although <sighs> I, I will talk about people now. One of the problems I have, all right, with events like this, big events like this, is that you are surrounded by tons of people. Now, this shot here, I adore. I do like it. I don't know why. I just like it. Um, but people made it idiotic and it's annoying now I, I saw a bunch of professional photographers out there uh, while I was down here and as well as I just saw you know a load of amateurs I'll talk a bit uh, later on why they're amateurs in a way um, but um, so yeah and I forgot what I was gonna say now anyway <laughs> yeah so uh, there there is a load of professional and amateur photographers out on the site there were um, and um, as well as that tens and thousands tens of thousands of people that don't respect that you're a photographer now I'll talk about a few people and I'll talk about some photographers who I saw um, and it for me as a photographer it can be very stressful Especially when you have, you know, big enough gear for people to recognise that you're taking a photo. I can understand if people, you know, taking photos with phones. That's understandable that people get in the way because you can't actually tell sometimes that they're trying to take a photo. Whereas photographers, they've, they've got big lenses, like 70 to 200. So they've got their wides, like, I don't know, primed, etc. Stuff like that. And you can tell that they're taking a photo. But people don't seem to get that, and it's just in this instance here. I was far back, of course. There's 150, so you got to remember that this is a full frame lens, all right. So on my crop sensor DSLR, so on my D3300, this is an equivalent 225 millimeter lens at 150. When it goes all the way to 600, it's nine millimeter equivalent, so it can be very big. And um, 
it's sharp. It's sharp, this lens is. I can very much tell you that. See, I would have put this this photo like that. I like that because you've got the people behind. I don't mind the people behind here. But it's just, uh, and it annoys me. It annoys me deeply. I mean, this is nice and all. Although, you know, I don't... I, 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 that. That's the thing I don't like. Although I do like, you know, supporting charities, etc. So I just don't like it when it's like that. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, here's one of the rides. You're not going to see me on one of these anytime soon. Um, yeah, not going to see me on one of those at all. But, you know, pick your fancy, whatever you want. I don't, I don't mind if you want to go on those. But yeah, um, so actually my focus point was up here, or less I was focusing up on here. Um, you can see the sun setting down here, so we're slowly getting into the low light areas. And uh, again, we're still at ISO 400, because the lens performed quite well still at that. Um, how does it how does look with colour? I think colour looks a bit better. Though I feel that's too black. Like I want to get in that those lights. Me, okay. We'll think about it. <sighs> nah, don't don't like it. No, that's at one sixty. If you can see, there's a bit of motion blur. Also, it looks a bit out of focus. Here are the chimneys. I wanted to get a nice sort of chimney stamp, but the trouble is I have to be higher. I do. I have to get high, high for that to work. And it's, you can see it's on a slope-ish. Um, and it's hard to try and get that. And as well as that, you see people's heads. Which is annoying. I did a previous shot I did, which was all right, I think. So I'll probably have that. Here are some lights. I wanted to try and get some nice sort of creative light shots. Um, although this doesn't seem to work because people, stuff like that. I like doing shots where they're through stuff, where you get stuff out of focus. Didn't work there, too small of a gap. What the hell is going on there? And there. 130th. I did not know I was shooting that one. Because the, tr the trouble is, I normally rely on my shutter to, um, so I can interpret what shutter speed I'm doing. So I don't have to look, you know, at my DSLR. And the trouble is, because there's all this noise going on, you, can, you can't hear your shutter. Now, I mean, it sounds nice when you can't hear your loud shutter. Um, you can just hear like a sort of you know, a sort of something like that. I don't like it's like a nice noise. I like the shutter when you can't really hear it because of all the noise. It's nice, but you can't actually tell what shutter you're shooting at. Like you can't tell one four hundredth, one four thousandth to one tenth. It's yeah. But anyway, this is a wide with my eighteen fifty five. I don't tend. I don't tend to like to do wides because it can in some ways look very amateurish. Um, and I don't try and focus on them as much. This one here is probably my favourite of all Sherman engines. I do love this one. Nice blue, works with the yellow um, wonderfully. Um, uh, I like this one here. I had a. I, I don't like the blue on top of there. I don't like the green. I like the white, the creamish colour on there. I think this, if this was red, it would be a lot more nicer. And if that was a white roof or a black roof, I think it would look nice. But I don't think the green works. Um, I'm going to leave that one for the time being. I don't like that. Now this is sort of... Because I like to do detailed shots. Now of course with a, with a 225mm equivalent you can't really do detailed shots. Um, but you can do stuff like this. Which I think works. Because you can see all the detail in the wood, you see and the the shite on the uh, number plate, etc. So like that, and it all 
all comes out as detail. I think I don't do that. I do like the glare on that bulb. No, though. I've heard actually in 2018 they're trying to get rid of the halogen bulb. So fascinating. They have it like that. I like that color. I don't. I don't think color would work. I like black and white. And people say I overuse black and white quite a lot. And um, I don't think I do. And uh, you can say it to me how much, how like a thousand times, but I don't think I overuse black and white at all. Because in the right era, in the right sort of stuff that you're shooting, it works. For example, this is old. This is old, all right? This is, you know, sort of Greece, etc., stuff like that. I've never... Is that off axis? I think that is. I'll come back to that a bit later. Um, but this is old school. This is this is, you know, this is um, this is old. It's back from a time when you know there wasn't color, and it it's old, so black and white fits it. It's just you're trying to tell a story. Whereas, like, I don't. I, don't, I mean, like, I don't think black and white works. I mean, like. Or what I don't I don't think colour works. In some ways, yes. In some ways no, I don't think. I think um I mean like what you could do in some ways is just I mean it it's hard to explain. You could do something like that. You could But I, I think I prefer all black and white. It fits quite well then. This you can, this is a test of the bokeh. So you can see I'm like focused on here, around here. And you can see at F5, it blows the background out completely. And in some ways, you can't really tell what's in the background. Which is, yeah. And what I'll probably do, I'll keep this for uh, to show. To show in the uh, review video. I won't put this up on anything because it's a bit shite the shot anyway but it's just to this this i took just to show the um the bokeh you can see like from it starts from around i'd say like here like around just like here it starts to then bokeh out so from here onwards but yeah I mean, at 150, this, or 225, very sharp, this lens is. It's unbelievably sharp. Um, and yeah. So this I like. You've got the motion blur of the wheel. And these spin incredibly fast, they do. And this is basically, they're like their own, they, they self-power each other. They uh they're wonderful. This is like a big generator that they have um, for their belt, and it, it's it's all you guys will probably know. But basically, the big wheel on the side here, you've got a belt that feeds to this generator here. As that spins, this spins, doing a and where it spins a uh, generator around a like a coil thing, and it builds up a charge, and it's creates electricity. Can't explain it in a brilliant way, but you get the point there's one there. Um so yeah, here we go. This is a bit more better, I find. If it and you can see we're getting we're still at ISO four hundred we are. And you can see the light has gone down a bit more. I don't think black and white works. I like the because I like the light on there. You can't actually you don't get as much you don't get the sense of the light spreading across there or in here you can that looks too saturated if I do that uh, yeah 
I don't. I think it's a give or take thing. I'm not happy with it. So tried it again. I'm focused on this one. I think, or is it this one? It's one of those. It might be that one. Nah. Here we go. Focusing on the bulb this time. I've always wanted to get like a nice bulb shot with all the filament etc stuff like that and you can sort of see it in there so that brings out a lot again in black I would like to get that number plate in Um, hmm. I'm going to keep it black and white. Yeah, I'm going to go just a bit like that. Anyway, we're back now on the uh, track thing, the Bob again, coming down. And the annoying thing is, I've got this stupid post along here. I don't know why they've got it. It's it, it ruins photos. It does because you've got this post in the way, and it's all. You can tell where you can. There's a grass patch. You can tell where they're coming out. I d that doesn't need a belt, you know, or a bit of string, you know. Is it 180 if this is at ISO 800? I don't tend to to shoot at ISO 800. On here, it looks very much... This is the sort of lighting. There we are. That's the lighting we were dealing with. And of course, I was overexposed by a bit. But... Um, ISO 800, I don't tend to shoot in it because you start on this DSLR specifically, you start to see your um, grain to start to appear on the actual photo and I thought I did see some not as much as I would have seen yeah like ISO 800 is my max although I did play with 3200 and 3200 on some stuff and um, we'll see how that looks that's the max ISO this, uh, this DSLR can do um, I like that I do. Hmm. Try that. It's all right. Uh, here we go again. This is 180. If like, you know, this is. I mean, it sounds perfect, but that's the, the lens itself is around like two kilograms, and it <laughs> holding it for a while, it does start to kill. To be very much honest, so you're there, especially at your at your longest focal length, which is yawning, yeah, 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 which is um, ISO. Uh, ISO, which is 600, so 900 millimeters equivalent. It it can because it's front heavy. It can be quite tedious. Um, I why did I shoot at 150? Uh, lighting, lighting. Yeah, it's a trouble. You guys can't actually tell how dark it was. Why on earth are you there? Let's get the lighting back. There we go. That's better. That's what it was like. I like it as that though. That's quite nice. How does it look in colour? Oh, black and white, sorry. I like that. You, there is a bit of motion blur on the wheels. But I think that gives it character. Instead of it being flows. Being frozen, not flows. 
I think that's nice. They're looking out. Uh, just need to straighten it. Hmm. Yeah, it's all right. I think the cut wheels off, the, the wheels being cut off. I think that's a bit mean. What the hell was that? Anyway, this is under underexposed. Ah, now here you can now start to see the grain coming out. I can see that clearly on there. Uh huh. Yeah, I see that on there. It starts to come out when you underexpose. So you can see that on there. Yep, it's dead. That's the trouble, you're dealing with slow shutter speeds, isn't it? It can, in some ways, be very tedious on your photos. If I want to to expose that. That's better. That works. Boom, boom. Can I, uh... Do, 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 do that. Yeah. <laughs> 120th. I know what I was trying to do there. Is it 120th? <laughs> oh dear. Right. 132. Wait for it. <laughs> you can see the grain. You can see the grain. Right. So as the light is now down. What I will t st start to talk about is a lady next to me, or I say a lady, a uh, amateur lady, a few rows uh, to the right of me. She was in auto, clearly, because who would use flash at this point? I know it's dark, but really, what is flash going to do? And it irritated me, really, it did, because what are you trying to do? All you're covering, all you're going to be doing is you're going to be getting a bit of light that covers a little tiny little circle of a uh, little circle, um, so a really f tiny radius. And instead, it just it peed me off, and I kept looking around to try and see who it was, even though I knew who it was, and it it annoyed me because it wasn't sort of necessary in a way. See, this is why I don't like dealing with ISO 100. Uh, 800, sorry, in, especially in low light. Can I get a... Eh. So look at the grain. And that isn't even sharpened yet. Yeah. You take that out and you can see more of the... <laughs> This is why I don't tend to shoot at low light. For this reason, because it... It brings it out. Hmm, <laughs> okay. Right, anyway, now we are very much... See, like, if we... D yeah. Anyway, I took um, this opportunity to try and take some photos when it was dark, dark. This this best represents it. Anyway, so basically what I was trying to do, um, these are getting deleted, but you will see in a few, there, there we go. That's what I was trying to do, get. And if, if I was, a f if I stood still a bit more, 
that I say would have been perfect, but didn't. So I'm bummed about that, but you get what I mean. What I was trying to do, basically, as it was coming up the hill, they they put the regulator up, and that makes it chuff a lot harder, and therefore it brings up embers out of the chimney here. And this is what you can see: the uh, stuff like that. see him a bit better on there again so this isn't my this isn't my speciality doing night photography in any way I would like to do it with the stars stuff like that but I wouldn't like to do sort of shooting stuff in the dark like this it's a very bad thing to do and I, I my brother said Ben you should attempt flash and I was thinking no I'm, there's no way I'm gonna be bothering to attempt flash at all because um, there's just really there's no point. This is at eight seconds on the wide, so you can get a. This is that f5 again. I mean, that's out of focus. That's out of focus. I don't know where was I focusing, like down here, but the sky I will say was lovely, though. Um, as you can see, it's just in some ways. <laughs> what on earth? See, this, this, rep this is representing me badly now. Um, anyway, this is the sort of stuff that I do like to do, though. If it's stuff like this in the night, I'm happy because I can do it. Because there's a bit of light, and actually, we can use that light to make stuff look better. Like this. Like this here. And it, it sort of. This is nice because. It hides it in a way, but you have this light coming in through here that unhides it in a way. And it, it it's hard to say, it's hard to it's hard to talk about, but because as I say, you don't wanna see if I this is what more this is what normal people would do. They bump up their exposure and it would go like that. So therefore I have to reduce it, but then I have to bump out the actual colours again. And again, that's bringing out the grain. So leaving it like this would be a better idea, but it's just... It's not, not what I'm going to do. <laughs> but it was fun to do, don't get me wrong. So this is a heavy haulage, basically this is what uh Wade Bridge, one of the uh local is it one twentieth? Right I was trying to get the moon a bit blurred out. Although the optical stabilization is good, it's not like one that I would say for night. It's just, yeah. Gotta get all of these out. <laughs> but, I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna keep. Can you. No. You can see the moon is blurred out. You can. I'm trying to focus on something here which is hidden. If I bring up the exposure. Can you see it? Yeah, I was trying to get the smoke on there. And of course, I, don't, I mean, anyway. nah. Anyway, we're over halfway, which is good. Anyway, so now we're back in the uh, here now. This is nice. I do like doing stuff at night. You can see the boker on here. 
it's l gorgeous. Anyway, this is an ISO 800 yet again. And as I say, I want to try and limit as much as possible that. Because, of course, if I put my exposure up, the higher it is, the darker it gets. The slower it is, the more brighter it gets. But making the image motion blurred, but also, you know, oh, very much overexposed. And the thing is, you can overexpose stuff and then de-expose it. And that, in theory, should get rid of a bit of the grain. But... In low light situations, you want to get it mainly bang on. Because really, if you try and go from underexposed to that, you get, you're going to get something like that. So I try and not as... So I try not to uh, overdo it when doing stuff at night. I like that. Is that? I took okay. I took two more. It's at one sixty. It's that slower now. You want to focus on that pole? Don't like it though. What on earth was that? I think there's a chimney. Yeah, they were. One sixth. Nah. Right. During the evening, there were a ton of photographers there. I say a ton. Three I saw. And, uh... <sighs> yeah, I'm tired. And <laughs> I don't feel tired. But, um... People, alright, you guys who are... If any of you are watching and you've been in the vicinity of a photographer respect them all right as much as they try and respect you if they're trying to take a photo get out of their way all right don't intrude on them in any sort of way it makes them angry and i saw one photographer he was going mental his expressions was like Arr! and it was it was sad to see because it's so obvious there's a bit of grain coming down here i can see you're taking a photo but people don't see that and it's annoying is that guy looking at me Ooh, that grain yeah I like that I like that that's it this is at 3200 okay this is this is the point where I, d I mean as I say 800 is my max 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 3200 is like my see grain and I try and stay out of that at all and I, I hate shooting in that and you can see it's mainly photos render and of course they render useless but I mean with with the higher end DSLRs you can actually a D5, something like that. I mean, you can go higher than that and you don't see a big effect on the photo, but with this, it's just... You can see it's all up on here. When do I go back to 800? Please say soon. I would have been more happy to stick with 800. See? Nah. Nope. And also, when when a photographer is taking a photo, don't try and stare into his lens at all, or try and not stare at him at all in a way, because for me this is just personal thing preference. I'm not saying you should shouldn't do it, but I like the people don't I I like it when people don't look at you in a photo, because it looks a bit meh. Some nice embers. There we go. ISO four hundred. It's a bit better. You can see that grain popping out on here. I have seen photos where they are like that before. And I, I'm thinking to myself, how on earth 
Did you think that was acceptable? Yeah. Nope. Probably uh, 800 I would have gone with that. Here is the, um, the, the thing, Death of Doom. I tried to do a bit of, um, because it was spinning, I tried to get it where it, you see the lines in the way, and I tried to do that, of course I was standing, but I just, in the end I just didn't bother. So yeah, I think, I mean the end one, yeah, let's try the end one. <laughs> try the end one. See, why can't, if you select them all and then press delete, why can't that just, why can't Lightroom just figure out, ah, you want to delete them, so you did, yeah. <laughs> It would be a shame if those were to be unbolted. <laughs> uh, anyway, here we go. So out of 300 and so I think I took, 52 made the cut. And I'm actually quite happy with some. Um, as I say, these are sharp. We've got a black and white image of this, I think. And I... I like to, as I say, I did do a lot of black and white. I did uh, more than I would have liked to in some ways. There's a black and white variant of that. But really, it's all up to you as a photographer. I am very much different to most of the other photographers. And I, <laughs> in one place, I don't bring the right gear. Um, I bring a telephoto lens instead of a nice wide for the close-ups, but the reason I brought it was for the review process. And um, <laughs> it's crap in low light. I'll tell you that the, the one hundred and fifty to six hundred. Um, but yeah, and I, 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 I do like what I've got here. I think there there are a bunch that is good. I like for example the, this one here. Um, I try and focus on emotions as well. I want to tell a story as well and that's why most some of them are in black and white to fit the theme of what it is and that's why people say Ben why do you do a ton of black and white and it's just I'm trying to think with the, stick with the theme and it's just is Wade Bridge right here. Don't let me die. Um, and it's just trying to you know tell a story that's what I always try and do and um, yeah and I think overall this was a good shoot um, but yeah guys so there's some of the photos some of the best ones on here you'll probably see on Flickr and um, you can go and have a look at the Flickr down in the description down below um, so yeah Comment down below guys as well as that, what is your favourite image and also do you like these, do you like these because we've, we've been doing these videos for a year actually and as well as that guys you can actually go and see the previous one we did, the first um, uh, Lightroom, Adobe Lightroom editing video series, we've we've been doing it for a year, don't feel like a year, I'll tell you that, um, <laughs> please change that to red, um, so yeah. I think overall, I, I like that it's on the kink, that's fine. There's Wade Bridge, hello. Um, I think overall, we've got a, a nice few. Oh, hello, I've forgotten to edit this one. We've got a nice few. See that? It's sharper. Got to watch that. Chromatic aberration. On the side there. Yeah, this is a lovely one. The blue, I'd, I'd love to own that. <laughs> I like the colour. Yeah, I love the black and it puts it in black and white. I think I'm off centre. Am I? 
Yeah, I am. Well, that's bent. Yeah, I'm off center. Need to move that way more. Is it? It looks like this whole thing's off. Like that should be more in there. I think that motor's off. Yeah, it, I think. Yeah, that motor is. That should be. That should be more in here. That's yeah, because the, the chimney that's central, isn't it? Yeah, the boiler. Yeah, that motor's out of line. That makes the whole image out of line. It doesn't matter. Still brilliant, Levi. I do adore this photo here. Don't know what it is about it. It's just that you can see the wood, the wood dying. You've got the number plate on here that is like dusting. You've got the lamp here. You've got light. Sorry, the lamp. You've got the chrome golden color. I don't, I'm not a big fan of chrome, but it works. Here, it actually might be a all right image, but I really wanted to do it just to show the bokeh. But yeah, I like that. Yeah, again, I am I. I'm gonna just do that. So that's a bit more central. In a way. Can we can we angle that? There we go. I don't I don't don't get me wrong guys, I don't wanna crop, but in some stages you have to. I don't tell I don't focus as much on cropping as I would like to. But that really is all of those images I, by <laughs> not happy with that. Um that's that's all the images really um from uh, the shoot. Overall I'm really happy with it. Um so yeah. What do you guys think down in the comments down below? I'd like to hear what you think. Anyway guys as I say you can go and have a look at these in on in on Flickr. Um down in the description down below. As well as that, guys, feel free to subscribe, like, comment, do all that. Really appreciate it as always. Also, stay tuned because the Sigma 150 to 600 review is coming up shortly, and also we'll be doing an Adobe Lightroom video on that as well. Anyway, guys, have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll be seeing you soon. Take care, and yes, bye bye.